Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, to begin off the Conservation Commission meeting, our first item of business is the public hearing on the notice of intent filed by the City of Northampton to replace an undersized culvert on Grass Hill Road near the intersection with Williamsburg Road with a timber bridge. A uh, site visit for that was done last week. And Joanna, I'm happy to make you a co-host so that you can uh, share your screen. So just give me a moment to, to do that. There, you should be able to share your screen now. Okay, here it comes. <clears throat> okay. Is that visible for folks? No. Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. Okay. I mean. Um. There you go. There we go. Oops. Let me zoom out a little bit so it's okay. There we go. Um, so shall I take it away? Go ahead. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, as, as as Scott introduced, I'm here to present the notice of intent um, to replace the culvert on Grass Hill Road in Waitley. Um, Grass Hill Road is a as you as you saw during the site visit, it's an unpaved, um, discontinued town road. Um, and as such, half of the road is owned by Mass Wildlife to the east and City of Northampton to the west. Um, our, our stream in question starts on the Mass Wildlife property, flows downhill, um, crosses Grass Hill Road and then continues um, and drains into the Anderson Brook, um, which is a tributary, tributary to the West Waitley Reservoir. Um, as such, this becomes an outstanding resource water. Um, so the culvert in question is a 15 inch corrugated metal pipe, um, carries a stream below beneath the roadway. Um, Culvert often gets blocked, especially in fall time with leaves and things. Um, and sometimes the stream ends up jumping um, the culvert onto the roadway and resulting in some erosion, as you can see in the bottom left picture there. Um, DPW is seeks to fix this culvert by replacing it with a stream crossing compliant timber bridge. Um, and in terms of the existing resource areas on the site, there's about 34 linear feet of inland bank within the pipe. Um, there's approximately five square feet of land underwater um, when the stream is flowing um, at the bottom of the culvert. And because it's less than 200 feet away from Sanderson Brook, it's also in um, riverfront area. Um, so just a few more photos in case there was anybody else on the site who wasn't at the, on the meeting who wasn't at the site visit the other day. Um, the upstream area is pretty heavily wooded um, with a defined channel. There's a photo of the inlet, um, kind of small, a um, little bit bent. Um, that picture was taken earlier this summer. Usually there isn't standing water above the inlet this summer with all the rain there is, there has been. Um, the photo of the outlet, there's a little bit of a perch um, to the outlet. So that will be that will be eliminated in the proposed design. Um, and then downstream of the culvert, um, it's kind of a steep, steep <clears throat> um, outlet down to Sanderson Brook there. So in order to understand the contributing watershed to this culvert, um, we did some hydrologic analysis using HydroCAD. Um, and for this, we divided the contributing watershed into two sub watersheds, um, one for this main stream to the east. Um, and then because the road swale also sort of is a separate watershed, um, 
there's a swale that runs right along Grass Hill Road there. Um, so that we modeled that as a separate watershed. Um, many of the soils in the contributing watershed are hydrologic soil group C, uh, with some A soils as well. Um, so when you, when you run the hydrocad, what, what we ended up getting was a peak discharge from a two-year storm is 3.28 cubic feet per second. 10-year storm is 13.49, and 100-year storm is 40.46. Um, comparing that to what the existing culvert can pass, um, the existing 15-inch um, corrugated metal pipe can pass about 5.7 cubic feet per second. So it can pass, assuming it's not blocked, can pass more than a two-year storm, um, but far less than a 10-year storm. Uh, the timber bridge that we're proposing could pass in excess of a 100-year storm, um, and so it should not have any issues with blockage at all. Um, in terms of the actual timber bridge that we're proposing, um, <clears throat> it would be three four-foot wide uh, timber mats by 18 feet long, side by side with a total width of 12 feet wide. Um, and these would be installed at road grade with a trapezoidal channel excavated beneath the bridge, um, which would result in an openness ratio of about 0.86, um, which is significantly higher than the existing openness ratio of the culvert. Um, bankful width is about 53 inches. Um, which is more, which exceeds the crossing span requirement by the mass stream crossing standards. Um, upstream channel width is about 42 inches. So uh, the proposed bridge design should match the upstream and downstream water velocity um, much, much better than the existing crossing does. Um, and the substrate of the proposed crossing would also match upstream and downstream as well. Um, so it does meet it does meet stream crossing standards. In terms of resource area impacts, um, again, it's the inland bank would pretty much stay the same as the as the existing pipe. Um, land underwater would would increase just because the the bottom of the new channel would be wider. Um, and total riverfront area impacts are about 340 square feet for the construction um, phase. Permanent impacts would be a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, I'm sorry. Um, in terms of permits required, um, there's this Wetland Protection Act Notice of Intent. Um, because it's an ORW, we were under the impression that a 401 water quality certificate would be required. Um, DEP told us yesterday that we don't really need a 401 water quality certificate because the impacts are so minimal. Um, and so they are planning to issue a letter um, soon to that effect. Um, and then we'll also be filing a self-verification form with the Army Corps for um, stream crossing compliant, uh, stream crossing under general permit um, 23. Um, in terms of construction, um, this shouldn't take very long. We expect it to be done in two days max. Um, and we are planning to do the work in the dry um, so that we shouldn't have to have to deal with the flowing water um, or bypass pumping or anything. Um, we will be installing, um, we plan to install straw wattles upstream and downstream of the crossing. Um, in case there is a passing shower or some some runoff, groundwater runoff. Um, so let's see that that summarized. That's about the end of my presentation. Are there any questions? Any questions from the commission? None for me. Thanks. Nope. Is that you, Andrew? 
No questions for me. Okay. Um, I don't have any questions. I just would suggest the uh, your last slide there about erosion control. If you could um, document that and send it to us so that we can include it in the file. Certainly. Uh, then we don't have to um, write it in as special conditions. Um, okay. Certainly, we can we can do that. And um, so, I guess my recommendation to the commission is that if we uh, if we prove this, that we have a special condition that says that erosion and sediment control uh, documentation be provided prior to construction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sense. Any any questions from the public or comments? All right, I don't hear any. So I will just ask at this point uh, if there any commissioners have any reservations about issuing an order of conditions permitting this work. No, no. no. Does anybody have any other conditions that you'd like to offer besides the one that I proposed? No. No, I don't. All right. So the question before us is to whether to issue an order of conditions permitting the work as described in the notice of intent with the one condition that I proposed that erosion and sediment control be documented before the project begin. Anybody want to amend that? Nope. All nope. right. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 All right. Looks like it's unanimous. Uh, so, Joanna, I think that should take care of things. Um, I will do my best to get this in the mail tomorrow. Um, okay. And then there's the 10 business day appeal period that will need to lapse before you get started. But mm -hmm. you'll need to things will need to dry out before that happens anyway. Yeah, it's most likely going to happen next year at this okay. point. Yeah, All right. unless we get a long dry spell, but. Yeah, and if you could, uh, just as a courtesy, let us know when you're ready to, to go with the project. Um, and that way, if questions come in from the outside, we'll know what to tell people. Certainly, we can certainly do that. All right. Of course. Any questions or comments from you, Joanna, before? we wrap up? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Thank you. All right. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank and you. thank you for that presentation. That was very helpful. Um, and we'll see you again sometime. Yeah, I'm sure we will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Good night. Bye. Bye. All right. Our second item of business is the uh, request for determination of applicability filed by Tim Norse. Um, Tim, are you with us? I see your name, but uh, you're still muted, so I can't hear you. Still muted. Yes. So you're still muted, Tim. See if you can unmute, please. All right. Um, we we still can't hear you, but we'll we, we will proceed. Um, <clears throat> we didn't see you at the site walk, uh, which we did earlier this week, but I can sort of give you uh, my report from our walking through the jungle that is the lower part of your property. There, um, there it is wet down at the toe of the slope and and at the uh, the lower part of the slope as well. So. There's a portion of that lot along the road, or, or not far from Haydenville Road, that is pretty wet, and it extends all the way across the property as far as we could tell. But it's far enough down over the hill that um, you know Norman had explained that the intention was not to actually do any uh, any excavation or 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 movement of of soil uh, within 150 feet of Masterson Road, which would be 
well away from the areas that we saw as wetland. And so as we talked at the site, based on what we could see, our proposal is to uh, to issue a negative determination of applicability, but with a special with a condition that acknowledges that there are wetlands on the property, and that the negative determination is uh, dependent on all work go going no farther from Masterson Road than two hundred feet. So that's that's what we saw, and that's what we sort of considered out on the on the property, and that's what we're putting forward. Um, Norman thought that that would be acceptable to you, Tim, but I, I I need to hear from you what you think. If you can unmute yourself, otherwise put it in the chat, and we'll 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 discourse with you that way. Uh, we're still not hearing you, Tim, so you might want to type into chat what it is you'd like to communicate, assuming that you're there. All right, well, I don't know what else we can do except to proceed with the vote. So the question before the board is whether to issue a negative determination of applicability with the condition that this applies only to land within 200 feet of M Masterson Road. Uh, does any uh, commission member have any objection to that? No. No. All right, so then we'll vote on it. All in favor of issuing that negative determination, raise your hand and say aye. 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 All right, uh, we will put that in the mail uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, there are 10 business days that need to pass before uh, the appeal period lapses, and so no work can begin until the, that 10-day business period passes. So that's roughly two weeks. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Email is the easiest way to reach me. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. And with that, we'll close the consideration of that item on the agenda. Next up on the agenda is uh, the review and, and hopeful approval of the minutes from last meeting. Did anybody read the minutes and did anybody detect any errors or misspellings or egregious misstatements uh, this is your time to to identify those so we can so they can be corrected i did not see any errors no they look, looked fine all right all in favor of approving the minutes say aye aye aye, aye. aye. all right um and then when we come to updates and other business i have no other business to share uh any any news or anything like that does anybody else have any uh observations questions comments uh Montserrat and before you even start I'll say I do still owe you the review of the letter that you drafted and it's that's what I was gonna ask the number one thing on my list so I'm gonna do it it's tonight. not even a page Scott yeah <laughs> you can it's, do it while you're waiting for your toast to pop yeah I realize that I apologize uh, that I haven't gotten to it so far. <laughs> Any other business? All right, well, despite the fact that we had two significant items on the agenda, um, looks like we're going to be finished uh, with a fairly short meeting. So if there's no other business, I guess we can adjourn until next month. All right. Well, then I'll see you next month. Enjoy the beautiful fall weather that's moved in. Mm -hmm.